Welcome back to another episode of Sister to Sister. My coffee's almost finished. Why are you drinking it so fast? Don't know, it tastes nice. Oh. Have you seen those new biscuits with the chocolate on them? Which ones? They Pop-up. are so nice. This is not a blooper. It is, it's an introduction. A no. blooper introduction. No, I want... Corny and catchy. No. I don't think so. Like about biscuits. you seen those new biscuits? What is your favourite biscuit? No. I'm asking you about biscuits. Okay, but I just asked you what's your favourite biscuit. Because if someone said, have you seen those new biscuits? Which one? And then I'm like, oh my god, have you seen those new chocolate biscuits? Which new biscuits? The ones with the half chocolate on. Oh, so good. I haven't, but saying that, what is your favourite biscuit? The camera's rolling. Oh my god. Assalamu alaikum guys. So I'm Aisha. And I'm Amina. Podcast created for sisters with sisters in mind. Assalamu alaikum guys. Assalamu alaikum. What are we talking about today Amina? I don't know what you want to talk about Aish. Well I think it's a good idea to start if we just introduce ourselves. So yeah as I said my name is Aisha. And I am a revert to Islam and it's been coming up to 11 years next month actually. Alhamdulillah. So yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I'm... I reverted to Islam in 2010 as I've just said because I said 11 years next month. But anyway, I'm... Do you think I should go into the whole dad thing? It's a bit... Just talk. No, it's a bit... It's It's fine. I think you you Come start on. with no you start with yours then. Oh. Why are you hitting me? Like, <laughs> like, every time, like trying to like on a sideline thing. Okay, so I'm Amina, and I've been a revert for ten years actually. This year, no, next year, January, February, something like that will be ten years. Inshallah. So how do you? How did you come to Islam? What's your revert story, Ash? Okay, so. I was your typical party girl. I was um, very much, um, I had a bit of a bad attitude, I think. I think that was that was kind of like who I was, how I'd grown up mm. um, and the kind of people that I mixed with. We were like, you know, on the scene and yeah, it was kind of like yeah, yeah, and it was just it was just kind of like a a lifestyle that yeah. we lived. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And I was like the last person that you would expect to come to Islam. Mm. Like, you know, I'm being very honest. I wasn't even religious in any capacity. I didn't grow up religious. Um, I didn't know much about religion. I, I'd say I, I, I could say I was. I'd classify myself as Christian, mm. mainly because when you fill out a form, it's like. And I went to yeah. church a few times. Um, yeah, I, I just grew up in a very turbulent um, lifestyle from an early age, and my my mum and dad, or I should say my dad, was. Um, he, he had he had some mental health issues, so. It just meant that I'd have to keep moving around from place to place mm. um, to, to basically get away from him because of his mental health. And um, I can remember at the time I wasn't actually speak, in contact with him. Mm. Um, and I had started, somehow I came across some people that were like still part of a certain lifestyle, but they didn't do certain things. They didn't drink, they didn't, um, party but they were still part of that lifestyle that I'm talking about Mm. and um, what I was fascinated with them is because they were like Muslim they were religious and I'm not from sort of a place where that's common so I grew up in like Essex and East London and over in East London and especially in Essex there's 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 not that many like revert Muslims so over in South London, it's quite common for yeah, people. Yeah, there's so more I, reverts in the South than the East. Exactly, exactly. So coming across someone who's from that lifestyle, but like has 
all this knowledge about Islam, well, to you know, knows about you know the religion. So I was fascinated. Mm. So I started inquiring, and as I said, with my dad, um, he, you know, I wasn't in contact with him. And one day, I got a phone call, um, and someone said, um, you know, you need to go to your dad's house. Do you know what I mean? You, you you need to you need to contact your dad. And I was like, why? And it was like, you need to contact your dad. You, you need to go, you need to go down there. You need to go down to his, his place. So I remember going down to his flat and outside, there was like police tape outside. Mm. So at that time, obviously I thought he was dead. Do you know what I mean? It's because, kind of you know, you see the white and blue tape. That's yeah, 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 the yeah, sign yeah. that somebody's been, you know. But Alhamdulillah, he wasn't dead. Um, but he had been stabbed like repeatedly wow. someone had gone into his flat and because when someone's got mental health they're not just yeah okay mm. they're kind of like they will fight you and you know and he got into this altercation and the guy just kept trying to like pacify him and they kept stabbing him you know stabbed him a couple of times in the arms the leg and one of the times it like punctured his heart do you know what I mean so Obviously, they was like, you know, he's gone to hospital and everything. And subhanAllah, it was like, it was so deep because obviously he wasn't in contact. And the relationship was very on and off due to the fact of his mental health. Mm. But at the end of the day, when it's your flesh and blood, your parents, it's just the connections there. So I was in, I was in like a lot of turmoil. I went to the hospital and he seemed okay. Um, and then... Um, they said, oh no, he's, he's okay. They'd like bandaged him up and everything, but he'd have to stay in, in the hospital. Mm. So I was like, okay, cool. And then um, at 12 o'clock, there's like a different doctor that comes on. Mm -mm. And that doctor had said, hold on a minute, he's got stab wounds in his, in his chest near his heart. Why have you not checked his heart? Do you know what I mean? And then um, when they checked, he his heart had been punctured. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so he would have internally bled to death at that point. That that's 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 what had happened. So um, they I had to operate on him and like like patch up his heart and everything. It's a bit emotional, but alhamdulillah because obviously he is obviously you know he's he's he's, 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 he's dead. He died last year. And um, at that time, neither of us were Muslim, and so it was like. I was in the transition. I went home and I and I was like, you know, it was it was very heavy. It was a very heavy feeling that he, you know, he'd been stabbed, and not only that, he was it was close to death. And um, I went and I just I kind of made a du'a to Allah, even though I wasn't Muslim, and I just said, take the pain away. Mm -hmm. And I felt like this this warm feeling coming up through my 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 feet and up my legs and all the way up, and I kind of felt like my heart lift mm. and even though like you know, how can you feel your heart lift I felt like an elevation of this warmth and this comfort mm. and there's no other explanation mm. but it, it came from Allah so um, I took my shahada like a couple of weeks later and then a couple of months later my dad actually came to Islam alhamdulillah so you know he when he did pass away last year he did obviously die as a Muslim so it was um yeah, it was. It was. It was. It wasn't just a, a kind of like a, a a small transition. It was mm. like quite a big transition for me. And as I said, you know, the lifestyle that I was living and the partying and everything. And and the thing is about that, I think um, I stopped quite abruptly in the beginning. You know, I stopped and I was like, "That's it. I'm not doing this. I'm not going. I'm not never again." And actually, I found that that transition easy at that time. And then I found like I, I was I, I started to back into it again because it was just so abrupt and it was just such a massive change and I don't think that we we talk about that you know that the, the the things that of course we would like to give up things and we you know we value our iman and we value our you know our Lord and that connection but that doesn't mean to say that all these things that you're giving up are easy. Yeah. to do because you've lived that way stop. yeah you've lived that way for for so long that is everything you know that's what you're conditioned to do and then to stop 
you know obviously I did find it difficult after a couple of years like and then I, I kind of was kind of very up and down for for quite a few years until I kind of found my way mm. do you know what I mean and that's not to say I'm perfect now but alhamdulillah Allah, you know you get tested isn't it yeah. you know and with those tests you you can you can you can learn from them and and um and it becomes a bit more like adjustable but anyway now that i've uh, shared my story what i don't actually think i know your revert story i don't think we've it's I funny because as you was talking i was actually thinking to myself I, I mean we don't know each other for that long but it feels like we've mm-hmm. known each other for years i don't know maybe if yeah, it's, yeah. that's that's that thing yeah, you know yeah, realm 100%. of the souls they talk about how the souls you you know sat together once upon a time before yeah. they entered the body so you know i feel like me and aisha have that connection it's very it's very strange but nice at the same time yeah, and yeah. we have some very uncanny similarities <laughs> in the places of our stories because our, our lives were so different mm. but we've just got so many like so much variation yeah but at the same time so much similarity Similarities, yeah um so yeah i was just thinking about when you was talking about the warmth going up your leg and into your body mm. yeah, that's <laughs> so, well. yeah so not in the same way but well, i'll tell you the story mm. so for me my journey to Islam, I think, started when, um, you know, I was t- I was taking that journey of going down the rabbit hole. Okay, right. So, like yourself, mm. I was brought up in quite a turbulent household. I didn't. We we were Christian. I was Christ- christened as a child, as a okay. baby, but my parents they weren't really churchgoers my nan she was the churchgoer so like all through my childhood early childhood you know i'd stay at my nan's on the weekend my nan would take us to church i was a god-fearing child i believed in god from early Mm. um so i always had that god consciousness about me so um like yourself you know i was you know i had you know my friends we was on the scene but not maybe in the same way <laughs> a little private joke there um we um yeah we was doing bits but yeah um not those kind of bits not those kind of bits <laughs> not those kind of bits you can take that how you want to be honest but because we're not going to elaborate but um <laughs> Yeah, we, you know, teenage stuff, we was about, and for me, I was more in my 20s when I was, when I really said, let's say found the road. Mm. It was more my 20s than early teens, because my mum was quite strict, to be fair, and growing up, I think that made me have that kind of rebellious nature as did other things contribute to that like my um turbulent relationship with my stepfather like it contributed to me having this whole you're not gonna tell me nothing kind of Mm. attitude and then i basically got asked to leave my my parents house when i was like just before i was 18 Mm. so or just after i was 18 yeah just after i was 18 so i i left and from there between there and the age of 24 free i was just living in different places different like friends houses um i lived in two di- two different hostels three different hostels um i had my own flat twice and lost it like you know like i had just mm. different things but in between that that was the stage where i was you know like i said found road but anyway later on had my son and i think at that point i was living with my son's my, my children's baby my children's father and there was a lot of stuff going on but for me i needed you know like within myself i started to look for what's really the mm. truth like why is all this stuff have to happen in it mm. why why i just need to understand why <laughs> god because i know you're there so mm. i need to understand why in it so i started that's why i said the rabbit hole I started researching I started mm-hmm. looking at 
religion because again I wasn't really I didn't go to church I didn't do all of that mm. the only religion I known was Christianity so I started looking at religion I started looking at you know all the different things um, Buddhism Hinduism Christianity you know I started researching the only thing that I didn't research was Islam mm. I saw my friend and her name's Halima so I'm calling her by a government name, but her name's Halima. So I went to Halima's house a couple of times. Long story short, she started giving me dawah. And that was when I first got introduced to Islam. I was actually, she'd given me the Quran. She gave me the Quran, she gave me this little Quran. And she said to me, right, when you read this, you need to have a bath and blah, blah, blah. Obviously, she probably wanted to tell me to make would do, mm. but she can, you know, take me through all those steps. So she said to me, have a bath. And then, you know, when you're in your room, just read it, open up and read it. So I took it home and it was there for about a week. And she kept saying to me, have you read it yet? Have you read it yet? And I was like, no. So then there's one particular day I was like, I'm going to read it now. So I went and had my bath come back. <laughs> so I started reading it. And then obviously it's Al-Fatiha. I've read what I now know is Al-Fatiha. Mm. And I got to the end of that and I was like, <sighs> well, that was a lot. Mm. I was like, that was really powerful i'm not ready for this book mm. i literally read those verses and felt the magnitude of it mm. and just was like i'm not ready for this thing right here and i put it down so then i think it must have been a couple of days later had a dream and in the dream i'm lying on my bed i'm lying on my back looking at the ceiling in the darkness and in the dream this ball of light emerges from the ceiling mm. it's like a white Obviously, it's dark. So, you know, in the dark, your eyes adjust to the darkness, mm. in it? So, it was like a bluish kind of white orb. And this orb is just floating down. I'm watching this thing float down. I'm like, what is that? It floated all the way down and floated and touched my body and then burst. And then burst in, into my body. So, the light spread down to my toes and all the way up to, the, to my head top. And I just remember in the dream having this overwhelming feeling like a sense of peace mm. a sense of calm that I've never felt before in my life and I remember when I woke up in the morning I'm a person I'm a dreamer so I always used to be recalling my dreams like mm. call up my best friend at the time be like oh my gosh I had this dream yeah anyway this this morning when I woke up now I'd said to myself I had a dream last night and I know it was like a movie as always but I can't remember none of it the only part I can remember is that mm. what I just told you? As vivid and as clear as day, but I couldn't remember nothing else. Can I just interrupt? Do you, want? you know when obviously we're learning about what type of people we are, mm. like the kinesthetic, mm. the visual, yeah. and the, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. what was the other one? The audible. Mm. Audible. Mm. <laughs> the all, was it? Like, your, like how your, yes. your senses. It's so, it's so like amazing that Omar kind of guided us yeah, through yeah. our senses because for me being a kinesthetic person being somebody of feeling to have that mm. feeling enter my body because I was in tears my dad you know could have died and you know my tears were just they like they, I just stopped crying when yeah. I felt that warmth yeah and for you, it was like the actual visual representation. Well, it's the same, because remember, I'm kinesthetic and visual. But more visual, though, more isn't visual, it? Remember, you're in a dream, but you're that, seeing yeah, it in this dream. That was, that was what tipped the balance mm. for me. I had the but I didn't know at that time mm. yet. When I had the dream, it was like, hmm, I just had a dream. Mm. And then... Didn't connect the dots. I didn't. Yeah. Me not knowing, you plan, but Allah is the best mm. of planners. Mm. Because then the same week, Friday, I'm at her house to go and do hair. And that was when she put on Khalid Yassin. Mm. She put on um, the, the Purpose of Life. So she's like, yes, let's watch this. So I've watched the whole thing. And well, I, by the end of the first one, I was just like, this is deep. Man. Mm. You know, like I'm really thinking now. I'm really mm. pondering. And then the dream comes back to me and I'm like, this is a madness, mm. like I can't. So then we start having a conversation. She's like, you know, so what did you think of it? So we start having a dour conversation now. She's giving me dour and I'm asking her questions. She's, 
she'd give me the answers and then I fired a question at her and she couldn't answer it. So she, her husband had been in the bedroom getting ready for Juma this whole time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I didn't, I haven't seen him because I've just gone into the front room and he's in the bedroom. So he's literally come to the hallway, but he hasn't come in the front room. And then he's answering my question from the hallway. Two hours later, he's still talking to me from the hallway, giving me dawah. And then, you know, like, like he man missed Juma and everything. And stood in the hallway and was just talking, giving me dawah, giving me dawah, answering the questions. And then in the end, he was like, no, but really, like, what, like, really and truly, now we've got to this point, like, mm -hmm. what, what can, what else is there to say? Like, do you have any more questions? Because at the end of the day, like, you've answered everything and really that, you know, for what you're saying, you're, you're basically Muslim. Mm -hmm. You just need to take your shahada. <laughs> so, the two of them was like, yeah, no really you know the truth you know mm -hmm. Stephanie's like you know the truth so I took my shahada in the house alhamdulillah alhamdulillah and alhamdulillah I'm still Muslim 10 years later how did you feel when you took your shahada like I'd done the right thing mm -hmm. instantly like it was like it's not too many times in my life when I felt that feeling yeah. in fact that is one of the only times mm. that I can really and truly like the other time that I felt it is when I started this this course, the um Al Alinea course the other day. Okay, yeah, I can do Like that. when I sat in the class for the first time yeah. and I felt it like really done the yeah. right thing. Like but it's only a few times in my life. The other time when I when I left the children's mm. the, the children's bed, like I it's only a few times. Mm. And I felt, again, a kinesthetic, um, like the angels were around me, literally. I just felt like I was floating. Do you know what I mean? Like my body just felt really light and I felt very pure mm, and I just I felt know. like, it wasn't even about right or wrong. I just felt good. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like That's I just what I'm saying. It felt right, it felt yeah. good, it felt like this is right, mm. this feels right. Mm. Yeah. And I think every time you see somebody take their shahada, you yeah. get that feeling yeah. again, it isn't it? It takes you back. It takes you right back there. It does. MashaAllah. But yeah, I just feel like sharing our stories is, um, I, <clears throat> I don't share my story that often either, to be honest, because mm. uh, it is quite deep. And it in it, it and it does bring up a level of emotion, but um, I think it's important for people to get to know who we are before we start kicking off the podcast. Mm. Um, if you do get a chance, do go and have a look at or go and have a listen uh, to the podcast um, to to kind of find out what we're all about. Because mm. generally, we're just about having open and honest conversations. Um, and it's a platform for sisters that we've created so that sisters can have a voice and speak about, you know, relevant subjects, experiences, um, and things that are they're passionate about. So speaking to you guys directly um, is, is going to be so much more beneficial because I feel like there's such a wider audience that are missing out. Isn't yeah. There? Yeah. And this I can't wait thing. to see, you know, the guests that we're going to have on yeah. this. Because we've got some interesting topics lined up, yeah? Some interesting topics. I don't want to say... Well, I, think, I, I think don't want to could... say controversial, but I think some may find them a bit like, ooh, we're going there. But... Th yeah, because in the beginning, when we started, it was kind of like, let's not go there. And we're always going to be mindful of being Muslim mm. um, and keeping in with the boundaries of Islam. So there are going to be subjects um, that we want to discuss that are going to be, you know, they're going to be about people from other people. So yeah. sisters are going to be speaking about their experiences. Real life experiences. Yeah. Not that people don't talk about real life experiences, but I think these are going to be some hard hitting yeah. real life yeah. experiences. From a sister's perspective. Yeah. It's about discussing the impacts mm. of certain situations that are a reality mm. in our ummah exactly. that are not talked about exactly. in the wider community yeah 
and like even earlier on when we were having a, a discussion off camera we spoke about um communities yeah. these these kind of uh, subjects are happening in all communities mm. it's not just you know one particular community it's happening in all different communities and and as a result of um some of these things that are happening they people are you know suffering people are you know really struggling mentally spiritually um and i think it's important to to show sisters that you can come on and you can you know speak and also that you're not alone mm. and that you you do have a voice and i just think as well education we're not uh you know shakes or anything like yeah, that we, sure you've got scholars yeah there. we're not we're not claiming to and be we don't want it we don't want it to be you know we, we're just where we're at and, it, and it's all about um sisters uh, inspiring and benefiting and uh, helping other sisters and that's what that's what sisters sisters all about but for now hit that like button subscribe and share i thought, I thought you were gonna say shake Share. <laughs> share and share like subscribe and share like subscribe and share isn't that what we're we are so grateful to have all of the support from all of you guys keep listening keep supporting us keep messaging us and letting us know all your comments and suggestions until next time on sister to sister be kind as you never know what battle someone is facing.